Blackmagic Design just finished their big update video. There was lots of stuff um, about cameras and camera to cloud stuff and in-body proxies and, you know, a new full frame open gate camera. So much to talk about. Um, Resolve was on the screen for like five seconds, but uh, we've got a new DaVinci Resolve update today and there's lots of pretty, pretty exciting stuff about it. I want to tell you all about it since we didn't get it in that video. Um, uh, I'm going to start to do that, I think, as stuff starts to appear. Um, but first, uh, to get this update, if you already have Resolve, you should be able to come to DaVinci Resolve once it's open. Come to check for updates. You'll have this update available. Uh, Resolve 18.6, click download. It will start to download that in whatever browser you have open. And uh, I am still waiting on the uh, support page to update. That actually tells us what we're getting in 18.6. While this is going, like I said, one of the, the, the what I think is the craziest thing they revealed um, is their version of camera to cloud. So in their new cinema cam when it's ready and then the broadcast G2 and on their phone app, which seems really cool, you can record in body proxies in any of those and instantly sync those to Blackmagic cloud storage, which will instantly sync them to any uh, linked uh, cloud resolve projects. So you can be anywhere you have service and when you finish a shot, the proxy of that shot will get sent away and someone can instantly begin editing that, like wherever they are, on Resolve, on any system or an iPad or, or stuff. So cool, I just wanna talk about Resolve. Okay, uh, we finished this download. We do have these updates. Let's check out what we got. Oh my goodness, I've been sitting around. I mean, it's still installing. So, so let's check out what we got in Resolve 18.6. Wild. Let's check out Studio just in case something else is different. Okay. Camera to cloud workflow. Awesome. Cloud storage. Awesome. That's, that's what was talked about in the presentation. Proxy generation. Outer text stroke in titles and subtitles. I'm curious whether that's like proper subtitles. Interesting. Uh, assign favorite keywords for clips. Fusion USD scenes with materials and volumes. Volumes sort of like the VBD, I believe. Ooh, uh, this might be some, I'm planning on um, if there's multiple big stuff, we might talk, have like sm smaller follow-up videos. But uh, volumes uh, as part of the USD system, USD still up and running, but very exciting. Import multiple mono audio files with suffixes as a multi-channel clip, interesting. Target loudness standards on renders, also very cool. Selected sync bin clips can be edited in the inspector. You can trim gaps in the edit page with the speed editor. That's super cool. Font case on subtitles, outer stroke, copy and paste markers, change speed for multiple selected clips from dialogue and inspector. This is something um, in one of the last updates, they added the ability to add stabilization on multiple clips at once, but you couldn't do this with like time change effects. If you wanted to set like everything to 50% speed, you had to go one by one. Now you can do that at uh, all at once. That's great. Adding an effect to a clip switches the inspector to the effects tab. That's a cool quality of life thing. We'll show that off. Support for a source resolution when rendering in place. Nice. Playhead position is restored when undoing edit actions. Fun. <laughs> uh, some of these. Uh, different time code visibility options. Ability to reconform multiple selected timelines. Not sure what that is, might be cool. Okay, fusion, uh, extruding and beveling 3D shapes. Right, extruding. Okay, custom extrusion in 3D. We haven't had it in fusion for forever. It looks like now we do. Um, with or support for the polygon shaped, cool. Cool, custom, custom stuff inside, inside the shape system. The shape system, super powerful. Um, now we've got a custom polygon, incredible. That same USD scenes, uh, USD stuff, USD stuff. Uh, support for DaVinci uh, da intermediate conversion options. This is color stuff, which I don't touch a lot, but pretty useful. Uh, like I said, I don't touch a lot of color stuff. Um, so I understand like half of these words. Fairlight, we got that. Support for target audio loudness. And uh, hey, they have a default one for YouTube. That's pretty nice. Uh, new ways to monitor that loudness. Intelligent abbreviation of long channel names. Interesting. Some more stuff that I'm skipping. Up to two times faster neural engine performance with NVIDIA Tensor RT. That's like hardware in just the RTX cards, maybe? So, I mean, hey, faster neural engine stuff and on modern AMD GPUs four times. Uh, I'm assuming they started slower. <laughs> uh, cloud services, quick accent to recent projects 
from the application menu. So like down here, if you have a recent project open, oh, that's the installer. We'll have to check that out. Um, I'm assuming that's what the application menu is down here. Like right click, see recent projects, that's nice. Uh, some API support, awesome, raw stuff, codex, nice ability to remove unused media from a project, helpful. New media pool column. Oh, and a uh, uh, smart bin filter for transcription status if you're using the, the studio feature there. Right click to add media pool timelines to the render queue with presets, import and export power bins, import and export render presets. So helpful, so helpful. Let's show this off soon. Uh, more importing options for fun stuff, uh, interlaced encodes. I don't know who's doing that. Ooh. Uh, that, that support for decoding GIF clips. We have GIFs in Resolve. Fun. I'm going to test that. And then that's it. System requirements. Other stuff. Fun. Let's open Resolve. Resolve complete. Hopefully, we'll get a nice little pop-up when we open Resolve. We'll see what they really want to highlight. Hey, this is tiny. I can't zoom in. Let's see what we got. Uh, camera workflow which they showed off, very cool. Um, I don't have an iPhone, I can't really do that. Cloud storage, background proxy and upload. Okay, all this sort of the same. Uh, stroke on subtitles, nine favorite keywords. Apply favorite keywords to clips and markers using shortcuts. Oh, oh, okay, okay. That's sort of what they were talking about earlier. USD materials and volumes framework is now available. A material X framework. I don't know what that is. I might look it up. Mono, multiple mono clips with channel labels as a multi-channel clip. So yeah, yeah, if you have, if you're using like an external recorder that's recording like six different mono tracks, Resolve can sort of sum those all down to one track. And audio normalization on renders, normalization to desired target. Very interested to check that out. Let's hop into Resolve. I am ready to start. Okay, Resolve, 18.6. What's the first thing we're gonna try? Uh, I'm gonna go to my desktop see what we've got around here. A GIF. Drop it on a timeline. We've got a GIF. Um, right now, it treats it just like footage. So it doesn't loop automatically. You can always sort of do the old replicate thing. But I have an idea how to, how to treat this a little differently. I might toss up a little fusion utility to loop this. To loop any which GIF you can. Okay, stick around for more GIF stuff. Um, we added the ability to export GIFs in I think 18.5.1. Was that just point one or maybe 18.5? I think it was 18.5. But now, import GIFs. Super cool for lots of meme-based stuff. And speaking of that, um, if I add a new power bin or even look at my default uh, demo clips. Yeah, clips. Um, I have some like footage I use sometime as a power bin. I can... What can I do? I don't want to export log. Do I click here? Right click, remove bin, export bin. We'll save it as a resolve bins folder. Oh, so helpful. Uh, power bins are a great way to store like modifications to fusion effects or fusion titles. Now you can store them all and export them as a bin. People have specifically asked about this. Very, very cool. And oh, you could also do that to custom export settings. I have like a YouTube preset here and I could export that preset, share it with anyone. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, it said there was also audio normalization. Ooh, this will be very cool to check. Cause like the way you're properly supposed to normalize audio, I kind of don't do. Um, cause it's like a little extra layer on top of stuff with, you know, this target loudness and stuff. Um, but if I can just toggle this on extra and it does some cool stuff behind the scenes, that's cool. I'll have to circle back to some of the, the fusion USD stuff. That's really cool. Ooh, except some of the simple stuff. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me toss on fusion composition. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. Um, what was it called? An, uh, S polygon. And this is actually inside the shape system. So I can go like S duplicate, S render. And if I toss in, this is just something you straight up couldn't do before today. If this is a small shape I got, 
I can just duplicate that. Oh yeah, then they're all there. You could draw over your logo, something fun like that. Let me um, fun as polygon. And what 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 did they call it? What did they call the extrude stuff? Fusion, fusion. Give me fusion. Rendering, no. Extruding and beveling 3D shapes. So if I have a polygon and I just go. <laughs> Pull that up so it's an outline. X Trude 3D. It connects shape nodes. Preview that out. It's in 3D. It's flat now. If I pull up extrusion depth, <gasps> toggle on my lights and shadows. Custom extrusion of paths. Finally. Ooh, you'll be able to like trace over logo stuff, do tons of really cool stuff. Um, really, the existing shape system. Extrusion, you can add extra bevels and round those and stuff. Fun. This is this is this is cool. This is cool. I'm still recording, right? Because this is cool. Ooh, ooh. Ah, I want to grab some material, an imported material X. That's a USD thing. I don't know what that is. And volumes, very exciting. Is that some of the fun stuff? There's fun stuff. Um, we got gifts, bins, render presets, uh, shape. Uh, polygons and a custom extrude that extrude will be a big deal i'll learn more about audio normalization i'll learn more about usd and volumes and material x um but hey for an update that you know they didn't even talk about in the video those 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 features i think are pretty great super useful uh tons of people will use gifs and now you can build a little uh gifs power bin library and export that Share it around for your, your editors for any of that stuff. Um, this NVIDIA Tensor uh, option I might also explore because that could be pretty cool. Looks like the last uh, iPad update is still 18.5.1. And if you're interested on that, maybe that'll get pushed out soon too. Actually, I, I they can't like release those at the exact same time. Whew. Okay, that's all there is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.